sugar molecules in their cyclic hemiacetyl form can undergo a reaction in the presence of dilute hydrochloric acid and alcohol to form an acetyl product known as glycoside. So as our example, let's suppose we take the glucose molecule in its cyclic hemiacetyl form. There are two types of anomers. We have the alpha and the beta D glucopyranose and in each case if we mix it with dilute hydrochloric acid HCl in the presence of alcohol we produce our acetyl products known as the glycosides where our methoxy group points either down or up. Now notice that what happened is the net result in this reaction is the replacement of the hydroxy group on carbon number one with the methoxy group on that same carbon and the only difference between these two products is the orientation of this methoxy group. So treating alpha D glucopyranose or the beta D glucopyranose with dilute hydrochloric acid in the presence of alcohol replaces the hydroxyl group on carbon number one with the methoxyl group on that same carbon. In other words, we transform the hemiacetyl. So this is the hemiacetyl portion into the acetyl portion that we see here. Now the question that we should be wondering is why is it that only this hydroxyl group is replaced by our methoxy? Why isn't this, 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 or this hydroxyl group also replaced by our methoxy group? So to answer this question, we basically have to discuss the reaction mechanism of this reaction. Oh, and by the way, when we form the six-membered glycosides, these are known as Pyra uh, pyranocytes. If we form five-membered glycosides, those are known as furanocytes. So let's take a look at our reaction mechanism to basically answer the question that we posed just a second ago. Why is it that only this is replaced and not these hydroxy groups? So to answer this question, we have to look at the reaction mechanism. So in the reaction mechanism, the first two steps is the protonation of the hydroxyl group to form our water molecule, a good leaving group, and that water molecule then departs to form an intermediate cation. So let's see what is actually formed. So let's suppose that we protonate the hydroxyl group on the second carbon. Let's see what type of intermediate is formed. So the hydrochloric acid protonates our oxygen to form this water molecule that then basically departs, this bond breaks off to form the water molecule as well as this, res uh, this intermediate that is not resin stabilized. So we basically have the localization of charge onto a single carbon atom, this carbon atom here, and this will be a destabilizing effect compared to what will happen if this OH group is protonated. Now, the same exact result is obtained if we protonate this oxygen, this oxygen, or this oxygen here. Let's see what actually happens if this oxygen on the first carbon is protonated. So if we follow the same exact two steps, if this O is protonated to form the water group that then departs, we form this resonant stabilized intermediate where we have the delocalization of of positive charge between this carbon and this oxygen here. So the difference between this intermediate and this intermediate is in this case, this oxygen is simply too far away to form a stabilizing interaction to overlap and take some of this charge. In this case, this oxygen, electronegative oxygen is close to this positive carbon, the carbon with the positive charge. So 
we can have a sharing of the positive charge. And so this will be a thermodynamically more stable and lower in energy system than this intermediate. And that's exactly why this will be observed and this will not. Now in step three, we have the alcohol group. In this case, we have this alcohol basically attached itself to this carbon to form this intermediate. And in step four, a base basically deprotonates this H to form our final product, our glycoside. In this case, it's our six member glycoside known as pyranoside. Now, notice when this alcohol attacks this carbocation, it can attack it either from the bottom side or from the top side. A top side attack leads to, uh, to this pyranocyte product, a bottom side attacks leads to this molecule where our group points in the opposite direction of the primary group. So we form a mixture of these two glycoside products. So we see that the reason that only this hydroxyl group is replaced with our methoxy is because in this case we form a resin stabilized intermediate but if any other one is protonated we form this intermediate that is not resin stabilized. In other words we have the localization of charge onto a single carbon. In this case it's this carbon for this OH it would be this carbon for this OH it would be this carbon and for this OH it would be this primary carbon which is a very destabilizing phenomenon. So we see that in this case we form the two types of products because we have an intermediate and the alcohol can attack it this carbon from the top or from the uh, from the bottom. So either if we use the alpha or the beta D-glucopyranose in both cases we produce this mixture of products that have our OCH pointing either to the bottom side or to the top side. So this molecule in which we have our group pointing in the other direction is known as the methyl alpha d gluco pyranoside and the other one is known as the beta d gluco pyranoside. So this is basically the formation of our acetyl group from the hemiacetyl where the acetyl is known as the glycoside.